Hello, this is the Get Started with Reference Linking webinar. Um, we are going to get started with this webinar in another minute. There are still a few people signing on. Um, before we get started, I just have some housekeeping things. Uh, the phones are muted, but we do have a question box to your right in the control panel that you can use to ask, ask any questions that may pop into your head during the webinar. Um, and Shane our, uh, from our support team is here to answer your questions. Um, we will be sending out the slides and a link to the webinar recording shortly after we've finished with the webinar. So when you become a Crossref member, you're part of a community of publishers that have committed to share metadata and provide persistent links. We don't just provide a service, we build infrastructure as a community, so your efforts are a large part of what we've created. Um, so to go along with that, we do have some obligations that we ask our members to meet as they are all in the best interest of our membership as a whole. Today we're going to talk about strengthening your relationship with Crossref by fulfilling one of your most important member obligations, which is reference linking. Um, reference linking means you include DOI links in the references for your content where they are published online. So when you become a Crossref member, your obligation is to provide these links with your current journal content. We ask that you commit to linking out from your references within 18 months of joining. And our best practice is that you link with DOIs from all of your references, including back content and non-journal content. We ask you to do this because your prim primary connection to the Crossref community is through building these links. You link out to members and they in turn link back to your content. Most consumers of your content Ten, expect link references at this point and linking with persistent identifiers like Crossref registered DOIs provides persistence. You can trust that the links you create using DOIs will continue to link for the foreseeable future. You also don't have to work out agreements with other publishers for reciprocal linking. So to sum up, when you create these links, you make connections that help to strengthen scholarly infrastructure and drive tra traffic to your content, which is inarguably a very good thing. So what is involved in reference linking? Um, let's start with how to display your reference links, then we'll get into how to retrieve them. We encourage you to use DOIs wherever possible for linking, in your tables of contents, new publication alerts, metadata feeds, and of course, in your references. Wherever you display your DOIs, we ask that you follow our DOI display guidelines. There's a link to the full guidelines on this slide, but know that the main thing we ask is that a DOI always be presented as a full URL. And a DOI URL should use this form, um, https um, colon slash slash doi.org followed by the DOI, uh, as you can see on this slide. Um, and you may see DOIs represented differently on other member sites as our guidelines have evolved over the years and not everyone is caught up. Uh, in the past, we recommended that people use the prefix dx.doi.org, but uh, we've moved to HTTPS and the much shorter prefix doi.org. And in the very distant past, DOIs were represented as DOI colon, but we've moved far away from that. Um, since persistent linking is such an important function of the DOI, it's so important that everyone knows that a DOI is a URL and that they can use that URL. 
and also that it is the URL to use when citing a work. So just some examples. You can display the DOI as a full URL in the first examples, um, but we do realize that DOIs can sometimes be very long and screen real estate is sparse. So you also have the option to create a link between the text cross-ref, as in the second example, or you can have some other text that indicates the link is pointing to an item's landing page. So to implement reference linking, you do need to look up DOI matches for the citations for, for the citations in your reference list. We have a few methods available. I'll go through them in the order of complexity. Um, obviously, the easiest option for, uh, for most things is to get someone else to do it. Um, it's obvious, but since reference linking is a member obligation, it's commonplace. Most Crossref members do participate in reference linking. So most vendors who work with Crossref metadata are familiar with reference linking and are able to work with that aspect of your membership as well as your initial content re registration. Um, we do get questions ab about that from new members, so it's worth mentioning um, if you haven't discussed that with uh, your, your vendor or platform. You can also have your authors include DOIs in their manuscripts. Um, we do have members that do this. Um, we have some public interfaces for looking at DOIs uh, that authors can use. Um, and depending on what kind of content you produce, uh, many authors already cite using DOIs when compiling reference lists or using reference managers anyway. So um, asking them to do this for you can save you some work, but it, that really depends on how much you are already asking from your authors and how much they're willing to give to you. We also have some user interfaces and APIs, um, and I'll go over the basics for those now. We cur currently have one interface that's used heavily for reference linking. Um, we call it a simple text query form, and this is the primary interface for populating reference links with DOIs. Um, it's been around a while. It's a little clunky, but it, it does get the job done. So I'm going to walk you through how to get your matches using this interface. So the first step, if you're new to this form, you do need to register an email address for usage. Uh, we do this because we need to track usage, and it's unfortunately uh, the system isn't hooked up to our overall system, so you can't use the same login you use to deposit DOIs. Um, this form is used very heavily by authors and end users, but many publishers also use it to help with reference linking. This form does have some usage restrictions. Um, breaking a citation up into parts for querying purposes can be complex. Every citation that's entered through this form is on the back end evaluated and broken up into journal title, author name, publication year. Um, and we do license a reference parser from a th third party. We use the Xtiles reference parser. It works very well, but it does cost us some money and we're not able to provide unlimited usage. We try to provide a high level of usage. Um, we restrict usage to 5,000 matches per month. Um, we found that this limit works for most members who need to use this manual entry form because you are cutting and pasting into a form. Um, and that 5,000 limit is for matches made, not for overall references. So if you submit a citation and we don't find a match for that, that doesn't count towards your total. Um, if you do exceed 5,000 matches per month, um, you may need to use a different workflow. So after you're all registered, um, you enter your email address into the form and you cut and paste your reference list into the form. Um, the form, it's pretty forgiving. It can take numbered or unnumbered reference lists. Um, if you have very badly formate, formatted references, it may, very well may not be able to find a result for you. Um, after you've entered your references, hit the submit button and Fairly quickly, you'll get re your reference lists back with DOI links included that you can cut and paste back into your manuscripts. 
Um, note that not all items have DOIs, so not all references will be matched, but it does a pretty good job of finding matches when they are available. We also support an upload option for this interface, um, or the back-end technology for that, the simple text query, I should say. It follows the same basic premise, but instead of cutting and pasting, you can upload a text file of references and have the matches emailed to you as an HTML file. Um, usage for that option also falls under the same limitations as the simple text query form. We also have a metadata search interface that you can use to do more of a free text search. Um, it's very useful for a lot of things, but um, if you use it to identify DOI matches for citations, you do need to know that it doesn't return only the one true match, like the simple text query or our XML API. Um, so you do have to look at the match it finds for you and make sure it is exactly what you're looking for. It can be very good um, outside of reference linking for just seeing, giving a snapshot of what metadata you've registered with us, um, whether your metadata is registered with us, and whether your citations look like you expect them to. We have an XML-based API that allows you to submit citations and get a DOI match back if available. Um, this API has been running for a long time. It's very stable and it's used um, by many members to uh, match citations to references for reference linking. Um, it supports XML formatted querying. XML queries give you significant tr control over the DOI matching process. The XML API is designed to typically return only one DOI, the one that best fits the metadata supplied in your query. And then it, and that makes it suitable for automated matching. Um, you don't ha really have to evaluate the results. You can trust them. Query results are returned in XML, and they will contain a full or abbreviated me metadata record for matched items, depending on what you request. Um, and I have a link in this slide to comprehensive documentation for this API. Um, the most precise XML query requires you to mark up each citation following rules established in our uh, content registration schema. In this example on this slide, you can see that the basic citation metadata is split into separate elements. Each citation has a query key that you can use to match the result up to the corresponding reference. And the query key usually corresponds to your reference numbering format. You can also refine your query by requesting fuzzy matching on, on an author name, for example, or you can ask our query engine to do an author and title article title query if a full metadata query doesn't find a match for you. You can also submit a separate author and article title query if you don't have full citation meta metadata or if you want to be very thorough. Author and article title queries aren't quite as accurate as full metadata queries as it's not uncommon for an article or book chapter to be published in multiple journals or in other books, um, but it is an option. You can also submit an unstructured citation to the XML API, meaning um, just a citation surrounded by an unstructured citation tag. <laughs> And as with the simple text query form, we need to break up this reference into parts that, so that our query engine can find a match. A well-formatted journal article is easy. Books and other content types are also fairly easy. Um, if your data is messy, um, we, um, we do our best, but sometimes we can't find a match unless the data is very clean. And the unstructured citation query is um, it's subject to the same limits at the simple text query form, um, but there is a way around that, which I will touch on in a second. Um, but for now, uh, when you are using this API, you can upload or post queries in bulk to our system. In that case, we'll add them to our, our submission queue and process them asynchronously. Or most um, quer queriers, um, submit an HTTP get, you get, you get results using it, um, 
right away to that um, query by query. Um, and the results will look like this. Um, the results of an ex a query will contain the DOI that's been identified as a match, as well as the metadata we have registered for a DOI. And when you're doing the um, HTTP as get querying, you can specify what metadata you want back. You can get, you can ask for an abbreviated bunch of metadata that just gives you basic citation information, or you can get the full metadata record, which would have funding data, license data, anything that the, the publisher has submitted for that record. We do have some other APIs that we can be used to look up um, DOI matches for citations. Our REST API allows you to search, facet, filter, or sample metadata from thousands of publisher members. Um, this information is continually updated as members update and add their metadata um, to our, our database, as with everything else. It's not typically the best option for automated DOI to citation matching unless you have um, a fairly sophisticated system on your end and you're able to evaluate the results for accuracy. We will give you results for whatever you send um, to us. Um, it's used more for bulk downloading of data or filtering on specific information like records with funding data, but um, it's a good option for any special projects you may have. We also have an open URL service. It's used primary, primarily by libraries because it link, integrates with library systems, but it can be used to match metadata to DOIs. It's not as effective as XML querying, but it's simple if you're able to break up your citations up into parts and if you're already using that technology for other things, it's, it's, it's a very easy thing to implement. So since we're talking about your references, I want to mention that we do encourage all of our members to register your references with us. Um, reference um, deposits are part of our Cited By service, so if you participate in Cited By linking, you are required to send us references and include them in your metadata record, um, but it's optional for everyone else. But you can send them to us even if you're not fully implemented the implementing the Cited By service. Um, if you include your references in your metadata records, you're strengthening scholarly infrastructure. Um, you can um, also help other Cited By participants identify when you've cited their content. And that means they'll be linking to your content from their Cited By matches that they display on their web pages. So if you're able to do it, it's a good thing, even if you aren't able to fully implement, implement our Cited By service. You can deposit references using our simple text query form that I um, showed earlier. So if you're using that to query for matches with a few extra clicks, you can add references to a registered DOI. You can also include references in your XML content registration files, either as part of the initial submission or you can add references to a record after it's been registered. We allow you to register as many unstructured citations as you need using XML. There's no limit because we really want to encourage you to register your references um, so that they can be included in your metadata record. Um, and we do try to find matches for all of them. And once you've submitted them to us in our system, we continuously will crawl through them and try to find matches if, even if we didn't find one with your initial submission. Um, so when you do uh, submit query for references using our simple text query form, if you decide you want to deposit the references, when you get your results screen, you'll see a little deposit button down at the bottom. If you'll click on that, you'll have another screen that pops up asking for the DOI you want these references to be associated with, as well as your um, username and password for registering your content. You just click submit again, and those references will be registered and added to your metadata record. Um, as I mentioned, you can also include references in your XML content registration files. Um, and when those references are included in your submission, we will flag any matches in the logs we return to you. 
We also have an API that you can use to retrieve DOI matches for references you've registered for a given DOI. Um, and you can use these matches for reference linking. So this means if you do deposit references, you don't need to query separately for DOI matches for your references. You can deposit and either review your logs or use our this get identifiers API to retrieve our current list of DOI matches for your articles. And if you need more help or have any questions, we have lots of do documentation on our support site at support.crossref.org. And we also have a small but very capable support staff. Um, you can reach out to us um, through the support portal or by emailing support at crossref.org. Um, and again, if you have any questions, please enter them into the question box on the right or shoot us an email and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you.